Good afternoon. My name is Linda Miller. I'm from the Institute for Employment Studies in, uh, in London. And um, I'm going to really keep uh, the, my background short because I'm aware that we've been losing out on a lot of the research ideas. So that's what I really want to focus on. Just, I'm just going to say that in the past year I've, I've worked on three projects um, to do with coaching. Two of them have been evaluations. One of executive coaching in the National Health Service in uh, the UK and at the moment we're also evaluating coaching for um, local government managers and um, both of those have involved Alison who spoke to you this morning and the third project that I'm working on is one that uh, the Foundation of Coaching has funded thank you very much for for that and that's the uh, the work that Andrea has already described which is looking at um, issues around uh, coaching for to encourage women into executive posi and boardroom positions. I've got a, a, a handful of, of research questions which I've, um, I've, I've both sort of come up with myself and also uh, sort of a ch uh, put together by discussing with other colleagues at the Institute who, who um, work in the area of coaching. So it's a kind of collaborative effort. The first thing I think is really quite an interesting and important question to address is, the, is that of the organisational factors or characteristics that make it more likely that coaching will have an impact. And I think here this kind of tends to border on the, um, the sorts of questions that some people were, were, were raising, the, the issues people were raising this morning. Um, so there, there are factors around organisational culture and perhaps critical mass. How many coaches does it take to make a difference? <laughs> Linked to that, does mentoring and supervision for coaching improve the quality of coaching? Well, one would like to say yes, but I don't think any, any research has really been, been done on that. And if we, if we take that as a given, then presumably there's some kind of minimum length of time of which the mentoring process should take place. And some minimum frequency for meetings or ratio of mentoring meetings to hours of coaching delivered. And again, I think that's something that could perhaps would repay investigation. I think this is a question that really one or two other people have already picked up on, and that's whether there's any difference in the effectiveness of internally sourced versus externally sourced coaching. And again, this links to, the, to, to my first point, does this vary with organisational culture? And for internal coaches, is there a difference in the effectiveness of coaches previously known to the coachee um, and, and those who are not previously known? And lastly, and I only found out about this on Thursday before I, I left to uh, come here, um, in the UK it's soon going to be a requirement for all school teachers to hold a, a master's degree in teaching and learning and um, coaching will be part of that development process and so there's going to be quite a need for research to work out that coaching process. <laughs>